When I was 27, I was put on the Willie Horton story. Willie Horton was a first-degree killer who had robbed a gas station with two of his friends. They took the money from this 15-year-old kid, Joey Fournier, and despite the fact they got the cash, Joey was stabbed several times and his body stuffed in a garbage can. So we learn in March of 87 that Willie Horton had escaped. And we're thinking, how does a first degree killer escape? He's in a you know, secure prison. We learn Willie Horton was on a furlough, an unsupervised weekend pass. He won a thousand dollar lottery ticket, decided I'm facing life in prison. I'm not going back. Went to Florida, eventually went to Maryland where he raped, um, he held a couple hostage, raped the woman twice, stabbed the fiance. So it began a year long investigation um, that I was on as a reporter. You know, what are these furloughs? Killers and rapists were coming out on the weekend. And we learned during that process, uh, I called every state in the country because Massachusetts said, oh, everyone does this. I learned after talking to every state, Massachusetts was the only state letting killers and rapists out unsupervised on the weekends. Most states, like when I called Louisiana and said, do you let killers and rapists out on the weekend? They said, no, ma'am, we hang them. Um, you know, Massachusetts had done this so prisoners would be um, good in prison during the week. So it outraged people and eventually uh, George Bush Sr., his people were calling our newsroom. They used the story um, on the national presidential debate against Michael Dukakis, who was Massachusetts governor. This became a huge um, story in the campaign. Uh, commercials were made about Massachusetts letting killers and rapists out. And, you know, George Bush Sr. used this to help portray Michael Dukakis as soft on crime. So it became a national story, um, which was very interesting as a reporter. And we went on to win a Pulitzer in 19, um, you know. So it was, I was very young, but I learned, you know, persistence and passion for your stories can, and can have amazing results. I learned very young with that story that you can't give up. You know, you always need to ask questions and demand answers and, and find out, you know, the truth of the story. Um, so that was a wonderful lesson at a very young age for me. I think journalism has changed, that it's become instantaneous instead of um, investigative, that, you know, you, you don't see as many in-depth stories. Um, you see more sound bites, quick stories, um, surface level reporting. I would encourage reporters to somehow you know, find the truth of that story and go beyond the surface, you know, uh, push for getting the full interviews and both sides and really trying to investigate. And I guess going back to old style journalism um, where you, you know, you seek the truth, but not in a one email interview um, that you talk to people and, and really try to figure out that story and the truth of it. And, and again, um, you know, do the service for your community. Find out, you know, what your community needs to know and do it in a way that is um, respectable and responsible and not throwing some quotes together. Because to me, that's not a story. It's just sound bites or it's a blog. Um, and I think, you know, journalists, their job is to, to put the truth out there. And, and I feel like it, it, it's kind of, um, it's not done enough anymore.